Welcome to Forgotten Women, a podcast exploring the women history has pushed into the margins. These podcasts are recorded live and the sounds you hear are made by us live. We are Nikki Fisher, Philippa Hendry, Rosalind Jackson, Becky Curley, Christina Perel, James Short and Holly Ann White. Four minutes to midnight, four minutes to Armageddon. Four minutes before we die, four minutes to say goodbye. And I'm running. Four minutes. Just four minutes to get to my boys. Running for our lives, running down, down the middle of the main road to get to their school. Running, feet pounding on tarmac, and the school ahead just keeps getting further and further away. And the road gets longer, and I see the cloud of smoke, and the blast is ringing in my ears, and I'm screaming, screaming for my children. And. And. I'm awake. At home in bed, wet from sweat and crying, and I tiptoe down the hall, and they're there, in their beds, asleep and unaware. Mothers, sisters, daughters, wives, 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 if mothers thrived, they lived, they died, they fought, they thrived, they lived, they died, they fought, they thrived, they lived, they died, they fought, they thrived, they lived. They died, they caught, they tried, they lived, they died, they fought, they tried, they lived, they died, forgotten women, forgotten women, forgotten lies, forgotten lies, forgotten lies, forgotten lies. If we are attacked by nuclear weapons, these are the warning sounds we must recognize. First, the attack warning. If an attack is imminent, sirens will sound with a rising and falling note like this. Next, the fallout warning. If fallout is expected, you will hear three bangs in short succession. When the immediate danger of an air attack or fallout has passed, the siren will sound on a steady note like this. In 1980, with a feared threat of nuclear attack, the British government commissioned a series of infomercials telling the public what to do in the event of a nuclear blast. These sinister animated films and accompanying leaflets and radio broadcasts were called Protect Protect and and Survive. Survive. The four-minute warning was a public alert system conceived by the British government during the Cold War. Three minutes to midnight, three minutes to Armageddon, Three minutes before we die, three minutes to say goodbye. In July 1980, Secretary of State for Defence, Francis Pym, tells the House of Commons that a total of 160 (coughs) cruise missiles will be located at Greenham Common in Berkshire. Cost to the UK would be be £16 million. There was no public debate. The following month, A women-led group called Women of Life left Cardiff. 36 women, four men, and several children walked the 120 miles to Greenham. It took them 10 days. They walked 120 miles? Yeah, I know. They they didn't want nuclear weapons in this country, and they wanted to draw attention to the cause. So what happened? Well, no one really paid them much attention, so when they got there, some of the women decided to chain themselves to the gate. And when that still didn't gain much publicity, they set up camp and stayed there. That's pretty amazing. Over the next decade, more and more women joined them and did hundreds of actions of peaceful protest to try and keep the nuclear issues in the headlines. Sorry, they stayed for a decade? 
For 10 whole years? Actually, the last of the protesters didn't leave until 2000, 20 years after the first women arrived. Seriously? So why, why was this? Well, Greenham is about 40 minutes from here, and it was a beacon for the whole movement. But there were other peace camps all over the UK. What? Why didn't we know about this? Why didn't we learn about this in school? I mean, it was just a few people. Actually, some of the protests were huge. Alice of Freedom, we're fighting. We are the women of freedom. Alice of Freedom, we're fighting. We are the women of freedom. Alice of Freedom, we're fighting. We are the women of freedom. Alice of Freedom, we're fighting. Yep, in the freezing cold of December 1982, 30,000 women responded to a chain letter calling for women to embrace the base. Living arms, they entirely surround the nine miles of the perimeter fence. There were 30,000 women. Yep, and a year later, 50,000 women protested at Greenham, holding up mirrors in a silent vigil to symbolically reflect the military's image back to itself. I can't believe we don't know about this. Everyone should know about this. I literally had no idea. What happened? Well, in 1991, the last of the missiles did leave Greenham. So they won. They made it stop. Well, yes, but we still have nuclear weapons in the UK. And some wonderful women still continue to protest. Those amazing women. We should know their names. And men. Well, didn't you say some men? At first, yes, but from 1982 onwards, the camp was women only. Oh. Sorry, James. Well, I still think we should know about it. <laughs> Do you think that's why we don't know? Because it was women? Or because they disagreed with the government? Well, nobody's talking about it anymore. I'm not even sure I know exactly what a nuclear bomb is. Uranium fission James That doesn't actually mean anything. What actually is it? Exactly. That's the point. People don't know what it means and what it can mean. The scientists who create it weren't even sure themselves. Okay, let's take this back to 1939. German scientists, such as Oppenheimer, are working on the atomic bomb. Although they didn't actually know it was an atomic bomb when they started making it. The scientists flee Germany and they go to America to avoid Nazis getting their hands on the bomb. At this point, the scientists have met Einstein, who, despite being a pacifist, agrees that the US government should be made aware of the bomb because they fear that the Nazis are making one of their own. So, the, the government is told. However, President Truman didn't know. In fact, he never knew while he was in office. This then means that the Manhattan Project is set up. 1939, code name Manhattan Project. Research, development, and production of nuclear weapons. Allies, United States, United Kingdom, Canada. Under the direction of Major General Leslie Groves and nuclear physicists Robert Oppenheimer. 1945, successful testing of Project Trinity. For those of you that don't know, Project Trinity was the first test of a plutonium nuclear bomb, which was part of the Manhattan Project. August 6th, 1945, 8.15, all clear to launch. In the dead silence of the morning at 5.29.45, the Hernada del Puerto was bathed in an intense flash of light that man had only seen from the stars. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remember the line from the Hindu scripture, Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty, and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that, one way or another. <coughs> the devastation at Hiroshima was followed by another bomb, three days later, dropped on Nagasaki. It's hard to know for sure, but estimates suggest that 120,000 people were killed instantly from the blasts. Approximately another 65,000 are killed in the following days, weeks, and even years. The United States had dropped the bombs with the consent of the United Kingdom. Wow. Yeah, I know. Okay, so the signs from earlier, how does that work? Okay, okay, so 
Nuclear fission produces the atomic bomb, a weapon of mass destruction that uses power released by the splitting of atomic nuclei. When a single free... Did someone say single? James, oh, wow. no. it's not really appropriate, is it? <laughs> <laughs> We're also talking about science. Yeah, well, yeah I'm talking about chemistry. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so, anyway. the <laughs> so, the splitting of an atomic nuclei. When a single free neutron strikes the nucleus of an atom of radioactive material such as uranium or plutonium, it knocks two or three oh. more neutrons free. So what does it do? Instantaneously, the heart of a nuclear explosion reaches a temperature of several million degrees centigrade. Over a wide area, the resulting heat flash literally vaporises all human tissue. Almost immediately, people inside the buildings will be indirectly killed by the blast and the heat effects as buildings collapse and all inflammable materials burst into flames. The immediate death rate will be over 90%. Short term, survivors will be affected within a matter of days by radioactive fallout. The effects of exposure to high levels of radioactive fallout include hair loss, bleeding from the mouth and gums, internal bleeding and hemorrhagic diarrhoea, gangrenous ulcers, vomiting, fever, delirium and terminal coma. There is no effective treatment and death follows within a matter of days. Long term, radiation induced, ca radiation induced cancers will affect many, often over 20 years later. Certain cancers, such as thyroid cancer in children, are particularly associated with exposure to radiation. And the children of those who are exposed to radiation are statistically more likely to be born with abnormalities and suffer from leukemia. I didn't know all that. So why do we know anything about this? I don't even think Trump knows about this. Last year he was interviewed by Chris Matthews, and here is his very clear message. I'd be the last one to use the nuclear weapons, because that's sort of like the end of the ball game. So can you take it off the table now? Can you tell the Middle East we are not using the nuclear weapon on anybody? I would never say that. I would never <laughs> take any of my cards off the table. Where would we drop, where would we drop a nuclear weapon in the Middle East? Let me explain, let me explain. Somebody hits us within ISIS, you wouldn't fight back with a nuke. <laughs> well, that's clear. Totally terrifying. And that's why we need to talk. We need to talk about Greenham. Just a minute, whilst on the topic of state leaders, with such awful immediate and repercussive effects, it's hard to understand why the government just haven't put a stop to it all. Well, it's not for a lack of trying. There have been treaties in place since 1970. The initial goals of the treaty were to agree to never acquire nuclear weapons, to agree to share the benefits of the peaceful nuclear technology and to pursue disarmament, aiming towards the elimination of weapons. So basically the treaty was saying, you can have them, don't create more, and make sure you share. <laughs> Pretty much. But that clearly didn't work, though. Uh, the treaty was made in 1970, but by 1981, women were protesting at Greenham against these weapons. Something must have happened to breach the contract, right? Well, at first the treaty failed to be adhered to, and in 1972, an anti-ballistic missile treaty was signed between the US and the Soviet Union. That led to the increase in the number of nuclear weapons, with each side hoping to have the firepower to destroy the opposition. MAD. Uh, yeah, I know, right? No, I mean, that was the plan. MAD, M-A-D. Mutually Assured Destruction. Uh, yeah, that's why the protests happened. This increasing risk of nuclear war led to peace camps popping up all over the place. They just weren't in the UK. But they were fighting for us, the women of Greenham. They were fighting for the future of the UK at the time, and many are still fighting today. The women of Greenham wanted the US missiles taken off British land, and that's what happened. It took many years of peaceful protest, but it happened. However, the threat is still there, despite further treaties being brought in. There was one in 1995 to promote the immediate ban and disarmament, which still hasn't happened. Article 4.1. Nothing in this treaty shall be interpreted as affecting the inalienable right of all the parties to the treaty to develop <coughs> research, production and use of nuclear energy for peaceful purposes, without discrimination and in conformity with Articles 1 and 2 of this treaty. Part 2. All the parties to the treaty undertake to facilitate and have the right to participate in the fullest possible exchange of equipment, materials, and scientific and technological information for the peaceful uses of nuclear energy. India and Pakistan exploded multiple devices 
and only got a sanction from the United Nations, and North Korea continues to test missiles. But now we've got the UN 2017 treaty placing a ban on use and production of all nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, many countries, including the USA, UK and North Korea, have not signed this. Tests keep happening, some as recent as 2017, and it only, only seems right that we keep protesting, just like the women of Greenland did. The following text is a dramatic imagining of some of the memories of Greenham. We made it looking at archives and talking to some of the women who were there. We dedicate this to all the women of Greenham and the people who continue to protest worldwide in the name of peace. Two minutes to midnight, two minutes to Armageddon, two minutes before we die, two to say goodbye. Always the same dream. The warning. Running. Running to try and reach my boys. The blast and the cloud. Several times a week. We never talked about it. The other mums at the school gate or drying the kids after swimming. We talk about rubbish on telly, their reading books, the weather, anything, but not that. But the images would flash into my brain, and my heart would start beating, and my skin cold as ice. Mum, mummy, you're hurting me. What? You're holding my hand too tight. Oh, sorry. I'll see you both at home. Be good. Bye, mummy. Bye. And you'd hug them that little bit tighter, and be thankful that... It hadn't happened yet. So I'm heading out of V-Jumps, laden down with shopping, when this woman comes up. She's <laughs> older than me, <laughs> sensible just, cardigan, um, just if you might want to. terrible fringe. Just having, I think you. she's probably part of a god squad, from, and I'm ready to tell her that we're not the like going to church just type just of family. Just like when to join us, so, she um, starts telling me about it's a, it's a CND, so the campaign for, um, the campaign for and nuclear disarmament. And I just thought you might be interested in like that. Suddenly, I'm telling her about my dream and the boys. And I'm weeping in the middle of the precinct and this stranger, this middle-aged woman with a sensible cardigan and a terrible fringe is holding me. And all my shopping is, is on a mess on the floor and I've got frozen things, so I need to pull myself together and go home. But I'm signing a petition and I'm, I'm giving her my home address. And I feel not so alone anymore. Go to sleep, you weary women. Let the squirties go shouting by. Can't you hear those launches rumbling? That's a peace camp. Lullaby. We are the women of Greenham, and it's for freedom we're fighting. We are the women of Greenham, and it's for freedom we're fighting. I'll we have you know. women of Greenham, and it's for freedom we're fighting. I'll have you know, I'll have you know, and it will take some real strength. What's it like living at Greenham? Well, it's wonderful but hard. Hmm. You have to stay vigilant, always on guard. Constant evictions. You had to have courage in your convictions, everything you own in one tatty old pram. You're singing around the campfire, then suddenly, bam, the bailiffs and the pigs. We all grab our benders made out of twigs. <laughs> they sliced up our plastic, extinguished our fire. You're just fantastic, all I desire. So I met Gladys the first night I arrived. She gave me the tour, she helped me survive. There, that's, that's Belle Heather, Marshmallow, Foxglove. And then, I'd fallen in love. She always tries to show others the way, talking to the squaddies every day. If they set off the bomb, or it goes off by mistake, everything will be gone. The earth will quake. The air will be filled with a toxic dust. This is why we are here, and this is why you must see the light, see our perspective. I'll be all right, my clothing's protective. <laughs> Under the full moonlight we dance Spirits dance, we dance Joining hands, we dance Joining souls, rejoice Under the full moonlight
life we dance. Spirits dance, we dance. Joining hands, we dance. Joining souls, we rejoice. Under the full moonlight, we dance. Spirits dance, we dance. My name is Holly Taylor. I'm seven years old and I'm a Greenman woman. I heard Dad say to Mum... Look, Mabel, we've got three kids. But then she says... I'm doing this in their name. And that's exactly what she did. This boy at school shouts out... Burn your bra, burn your bra down. I didn't care, I had no doubt. I didn't know him well enough, he leapt up in town. I danced on the common and climbed up the trees. There was always someone who wanted to play. It was brilliant. We ran around free. Except on an eviction day. Once mum was off a court and the bailiffs came. We ran but got caught and I felt so ashamed. I had our banner and a few outfits. My Angela doll, my favourite toy. I wanted to fight them, the horrible gets. You would take my dolly, you stupid boy! I picked up a stone and raised my hand. But then, these two women appeared by my side. And these two women held me while I cried. That's not how we do things. That's not our way. And they learned a lesson that big day. We all have to make sacrifices. Your mum, more than most. My Angela's a war hero, I definitely boast. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Women, make your choice. Stand up, stand up, create a world with us, nuclear threat. Stand up. I'd forgotten all about that day. And that woman with her sensible cardigan and her terrible fringe. Tried to put thinking about it to the back of my mind. When this letter turns up in the post. Uh, and well, it, it's an invite really. Um, inviting me, well, all women, to a big protest in Newbury at Greenham Common. I mean, it's ridiculous. I can't go to Newbury. It's miles away. And I've got the boys to think about, and John. And I can't drive. And I don't even have a car. And it says something about a local group with a minibus, and there's some numbers I can call. That's just a stupid idea. I know it's important. It really is important, but so is what I've got to do. My boys, they're, they're everything. My whole world. And if some idiot did set one off, press the button. We haven't even got a fallout room ready. But no. I I'm needed here. So that's just what I'll do. I'll... Go, love. What? Go, it's important. You really are a lovely man. And so I went. He had the kids, and I get on a minibus with a dozen other women I've never met before, and we head off from Essex to Berkshire. Just like that, to do our bit. And there was this sort of party atmosphere, you know, singing and chatting and sharing soggy sandwiches. And we get there. And it is freezing cold. December. Bitter. And I'm curled up in my sleeping bag when I can hear whispering voices. Mum, Mummy! What? Is it the bailiffs? Are the bailiffs coming? Too quiet to be them. So I poke my head out from where I'm sleeping. And we're trying to be quiet because we know some, some women that live here. They're sleeping. And I see all these women lining up by the fence. Mum! What? We've got visitors! What? Oh. There are so many of them. More than we thought. <laughs> More than we dared to believe. And they just kept coming. How many are there? I don't know, love. What, why don't you count? Okay, one, two... Wait, do I count the vows or just the visitors? More count everyone. We're in this together. Okay, one, two, three... That should keep her busy for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Glorious women. As far as the eye could see. And they're, they're tying things onto the fence. Nappies, kids' clothes. Even a wedding dress. Oh, my goddess. And... 
I didn't really know what to do. I mean, none of us did really. So we just found a bit of fence to guard and more and more and more women kept flooding in. They came from all over to be with us. To stand with us. And more and more and more women just kept coming until you couldn't see barbed wire fence anymore. Just thousands of women surrounding the place. And the police? They just stood there and stared. They couldn't <laughs> believe what they were seeing. And we weren't really sure when to do it, but the message soon got whispered down and we all held hands. And I felt... I felt alive. Like I was making a difference. Like we were part of something bigger than we were. Like I wasn't alone anymore. And eventually we had to get back on the bus and start the drive home. And all the women that had come home, which had come for just the day, they had started to head off. I didn't go again. I went to a couple of meetings locally, posted some leaflets through doors, but I had my boys to look after and a life to live. I know it wasn't much, but I did my bit. And after that, I slept a little sounder at night. Well, I know you're tired and weary That your hair is turning blue Never mind, we stop the convoy And we'll get the muncher too listening to Nikki Fisher, Philippa Hendry, Rosalind Jackson, Becky Curley, Christina Perel, James Short and Holly Ann White. This episode was written by Nina Lemon, directed and produced by Rebecca Alloway and additional material from all of us. The sound engineer is Mike Taylor. With special thanks to Liz Taylor. Thank you and goodbye. Forgotten love.